it's snowing. How many of you have already put your tab away and are counting down the days to when you can camp again? Hi, I'm Jen Grover. On this week's episode of Tab Talk, I'm gonna share with you five tips that will help you stop letting the calendar dictate when you camp and start enjoying your tab all year long. Stay tuned. Those of you who know me know I love the snow and it doesn't keep me from camping, whether it's late fall, early spring, or even in the middle of the winter. You might be thinking, can I really camp on my tab after I've winterized? The answer is yes. And I'm gonna share with you five tips to help you do that. Before I jump into those tips, let me first thank you for liking and subscribing my channel. It really helps me out and I appreciate it. You might be wondering, where can I camp? The answer is pretty easy. Many of the same places you already camp. Most free dispersed camping sites remain open year round. Many state parks have year round campgrounds. And even some of the private campgrounds that you may go to have year round camping. I'll place the links in the description below. Number one, check your state park campgrounds. Some states, actually quite a few states, have campgrounds that are open year round, even in Colorado. In Pennsylvania, many of our state parks are open through December. And in Ohio, there are a few campgrounds that are open all year. Next, check your private campgrounds. KOA actually has a really nice site that lists the campgrounds that are open year round. And Good Sam has a filter for all year camping. It's always a good idea to call ahead and make sure that the campground is actually open because campgrounds do sometimes make unannounced changes, especially with COVID. But I bet you'll be surprised at how many campgrounds you can find that are still open in the winter. The next question I get is, can I use the Alda heat in the tab after I've winterized? Yes, you can. As a matter of fact, it's really not much different than using it before you've winterized. You simply set the heat to the setting that you desire, turn the hot water off, and you're good to go. If you have the old thermostat on the Alda with sliders instead of the digital display, you just simply set the sliders to their normal position. Along with heat comes condensation. So how do you beat it? Well, you simply crack the window and the vent. Pick a window, you can choose that first lock position on the windows, or I like to actually leave it open just a tiny bit so that there's enough air circulating to mix with the warm air and you'll avoid condensation. The third tip deals with how to keep the bathroom warm. The bathroom is the coldest room in the tab because there are no vents and you've got a door blocking off access to the warm air. I leave the bathroom door open, it's pretty simple. It helps keep the bathroom toasty and make sure that your toes don't freeze when you use the bathroom. Lastly, what about using the bathroom or the water tanks or the gray tanks and black tank if you have it? Well, this is something that you're gonna have to actually adjust a little bit. You can still use your toilet, especially if you have a cassette toilet, but even with the black tank toilet, my solution would be still flush with water but use a greater proportion of antifreeze when you flush. You can still dump that tank as long as the dump sta station's open. What I love about the cassette toilet is that even if the dump station's closed, I can bring that cassette home and dump it at home. Using fresh water and your gray tank is a little different story. Can you pour things down your sink? Sure, you probably could. Just make sure you mix enough antifreeze in it. But you're not gonna wanna put water in the fresh water system or use the city water system. Or if you do, you're gonna to wanna to be very careful. I would recommend using bottled water. I fill a big two and a half gallon container of water and use that primarily, and even a couple gallon size jugs to flush with. And then as far as the gray tank, make sure that you're using enough antifreeze in your pipes and in the tank to keep things from freezing. And don't forget, the tank gains on your tanks for black and gray water can actually freeze. If you have a pre-2021 Tab 320, you'll need to use the black tank, so make sure you open that gate just enough to get some antifreeze in it. Same with the gray tank. I've heard some people say they'll use city water, they'll put enough in just to do what they need to do and then disconnect the water hose. If they're at a campground that has city water, there's some risk involved with that, but you probably can do it safely depending on the temperatures. You do risk having frozen hose or your hose freezing to the water hydrant, or even just water remaining in the freshwater line and, um, and freezing the lines. 
But I think if you're running the heat, the chances of that are somewhat low. Just make sure you winterize before you leave the campground. Sometimes people ask me, when do you need to winterize? When do you need to stop using the fresh water system? The technical answer would be when temperatures reach 32 degrees. There's some room for a gray area in that though. As far as temperatures, I've gone pretty low, but that was when I had an indoor freshwater tank. With my 2021 tab, I have gone into the upper 20s and had no problems. Um, again, your mileage may vary. I'm not recommending this. I'm just sharing what has worked for me. If temperatures were going to remain below 38 during the day after it had gone below freezing overnight, I would probably be more inclined to winterize my tab. The key is what's exposed. You gotta keep the bathroom warm and those pipes do have some exposure. You have to keep the pipes inside warm and the pipes going to the tanks. So those are really your challenges. I think if you can get away with bottled water, that would be better. If you're gonna winter camp, it's probably a good idea to travel with some antifreeze. That way, if you have to winterize quickly, you can. With the new Nautilus system, it makes it pretty quick using the siphon method to winterize with antifreeze. And I actually have stopped blowing up my lines because of that. But some people do travel with an air compressor so that they can blow out their lines if need, need be. I've done that in the past as well. But thankfully, I've never actually had to winterize while I'm on the road. I'm always prepared, but never had to do it. In 2019, I actually rode out a blizzard in South Dakota at a KOA. It was the only campground open, and I knew I'd want to have power so that I could keep the Alda running. I could have ran it on propane, but I wasn't quite sure how long I'd be there, so I didn't want to push my luck. This campground actually blew the air out of the hydrants and the lines in their campground while I was there. So I didn't have access to fresh water, but I did have access to their bathroom. One thing you may want to find out before you camp when you're expecting snow is who's responsible for cleaning out the campsite of snow. Is it you or is it the campground owner or host? Find that out. Also, find out how quickly they can do that. You'll want to find that out before you camp because when I was in Montana, the national park on the east side got five feet of snow. I drove around the campground about three days after the snow had fallen and those campsites were still pretty buried with snow. If you're gonna be somewhere where there could be a lot of snow, you might get stuck. So make sure you have the supplies needed and that you're able to survive on your own without putting yourself or other people at risk. I haven't had a chance to camp this winter yet, but it is on my list before the snow stops flying. What about you? Have you camped in the winter yet? Do you get snow where you camp? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this video has inspired you to get out there and start camping all year instead of letting the calendar dictate when you camp. Thanks for watching.